What happens to you happens to the message. How the messenger conducts his or herself validates or vitiates the message. So if you're out there barking at one another, if you're out there trying to one-up one another, it's not going to work because that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. Kill ourselves. So I caution you. No, I beg you. Beware of the gossips. For their weapon is the word. One final point before we actually begin. I have received several phone calls from young brothers who were familiar with my work and they've asked me what I think of what Brother Dawood has been saying about me. Is it true? If not, why would he say that? Normally, I don't usually give poisonous rhetoric, rhetoric spoken about me the time of day. But since it appears to have become a distraction to the young seekers, I've decided to take one or two minutes to talk about it. The brother Dawood that you have described to me today, young brothers, if you're listening, is not the Dawood I knew at the earlier gatherings. Yes, he was critical with a fuck you, no holes barred attitude that cut right to the quick. But he was teaching at that time. His words awakened and enlightened. Today, they only babble and belch, invoking disdain and revulsion. Those of us who knew him when, see what, he, what has happened to him, and his present tapes bear this out. Most, if not all, of his diatribe is centered in vicious gossip and antiquated, warmed-over topics not worthy of the Dawood I came to know and love. Brother Dawood, is hurting, and he's hurting bad. And his pain is expressed on the tape for all to see. Every now and then, vestiges of his earlier brilliance might slip into his droning narratives, but then his mind slips back into the anger and pain, and he literally attacks himself through those he admired. It is evident from the tapes that Brother Dawood is suffering an alcoholic breakdown, who also, with drugs, numbs himself into hopeless states of despair. I truly feel for that brother and sincerely hope he cleans himself up because on the real side, a drug-free and sober brother Dawood would be an asset to the underground consciousness movement. That having been said, I will speak no more of it again in public ever. So don't call me up and ask me what I meant by this. Don't stop me on the street to tell me what else Brother Dahoud has said in response to what I'm saying. Because I don't give a royal, presidential, aristocratic fuck. I want you to know that. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> my lifelong dedication to the study and understanding of metaphysics has been primarily a quest to perfect and develop my personal powers of reasoning, to hone the capabilities of whatever biocosmic instrument operating inside my brain for the purpose of assessing the mind of the creator to go behind and beyond the stagnant logic of the commonplace mind, matter of fact, reality index, into the light code, photoreality, or proto-reality matrix, to learn how to manipulate my molecular atomic self to ever more refined images of the creator. I guess you could see that I somewhat slipped and took a detour in my present stage of my journey. See? <laughs> got a little bigger than it used to be. This is the reason why I chose to share with you this topic of reason 
and how we may achieve a harmonious and reasoning mind under this present day reign of human violence and ignorance. This present reign of violence and ignorance is the tragic evidence of a spiritual war declared some 2,000 years ago. And we, the refugees, suffer within its perpetual aftermath that lingers like a stench that we've all become too used to. An example of this can be seen and heard in the movie Fight Club when the psychotic schizophrenic Tyler Duran said, quote, Quote, we are the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great wars is a spiritual war. Our great depression is ourselves. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. And we're slowly learning that fact and we're very, very pissed off. This pathological conditioning of our last generation X and the one we will, that will bloom over the next five years, which they call Generation Y, at our present pace of descent as a civilization, is already tilling the soil for the germination of the final degeneration of our society known as Generation Z. At this point, humanity either rises to its cosmically designated, genetically encoded heights, or sinks into the filthy abyss of its own self-degenerated, self-perpetuated suffering and misery. And thus have we defined our destiny as a civilization through the alphabet of sociopathic degeneration. The alphabet of sociopathic degeneration. Generation X, Generation Y, and Generation Z. Alphabets of pathology. Every time they talk about Generation X, it's always about what was wrong with Generation X. They're getting ready to talk about what's wrong with Generation Y in a minute because they're going to send them over to, to die and kill. At this point, we have defined our destiny as a civilization. The next question is, and the next generation, Generation Y, Check it out, is the most self-absorbed generation lost in a playland of distractions provided for them by the parasitic elite. The movie I, Robot. is a depiction of the entire sociopathic alphabet where Will Smith is the aging Generation Y and the robots represent the two aspects of Generation Z. Sonny which actually was an acronym for Sony from Japan because Sony was the first to uh, 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 explore artificial intelligence. Sony or Sunny was the hope of redemption, the special seed, the one, get this, not connected to the hive mother mind. Like I've been telling you. Anybody saw? I, robot. Then there are the new models, totally connected to the hive mother by way of the heart chakra, the physical seat of the soul, where she motivates them to kill. In the end, Generation Z is left to fend for itself with Sony as their leader and their guide. Check the chipping that's going on. Back in 1996, I made an announcement after Brian Wrong had come. And Dr. Brown was there when we looked inside of Brian Wrong's head and saw the mechanics stitched in him. He looked like a cyborg. Am I right or wrong, Dr. Brown? She, gave, she brought an orthoscope, the thing that the doctors push in your ear, turn on a light to look in there, and sure enough, we saw this silver thing lining his ear, going all the way down into his, 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 his ear canal. He had it up in his throat, in the back, in his spine, and in his chest. 